The following is a review of a comic book and should not be looked at as an endorsement of the creator involved. If you really think that, you should have yourself checked out because you're reading into things that aren't there. Also, the quality of this video is low. If you're expecting higher standards, go check out me at Nerd at Newsstand or something else. What you see is what you get. Thank you and enjoy. Hey guys, Starcraft here, and well, like I said, I'd be getting along to some of the other Mark Poulton focused um, Kickstarter and crowdfunded books. I already went over um, Sea C and Sea Dog and Codename Kill Switch. Now I'm going to go back to one of my earlier videos. I'm going to give a proper review for Graveyard Ship Volume One. Why? Well, I just so happen to get. Graveyard Shift Volume 2, um, the supplemental book, and as a bonus, the U.S. Assassin book as well. So I'll be going over uh, this and this one today. Then I'll be going over both of these tomorrow. And then I'll be going over this last. So, yeah. Let's just get right in. As this is going to be a spoiler video. Last time I did one talked about this, it was a general broad stroke talking about things, but I reached a certain end, you know, cutoff point. But I will say that, th and I'm not gonna bash this. Mark Poulton, great work. There's, but there's one point in this whole story that right near the very end that just completely disgusts me. And I'm pretty, if I remember right, there's there was some controversy about this when it happened even then. So you'll see what I'm talking about when we get there. But uh, yeah, I'll also say this, I do have some other issues. But again, this is not bad. But from one of the stuff we've talked, I've been talking about, this is still very good. I would still say this is still better than Iron Sights 2, for example. But what we open up with already one of my first issues. We're at Kessel Dracula. As we're introduced to Vladimir Blood and, um, um, Lilith Mayhew, aka basically um, the bride and drag and um, the vampire, as um, Vlad and Vlad is just looking on out, and Lilith come up saying, "You like you need to feed my love," and he basically like, "Love, lover, I am all those things to you now, and I want to be more, but you're married. What about your husband?" Mick Mayhew is no longer the man I married. He's cold, distant. She basically then goes on saying how horrible monstrous he is and all that and... Uh, like I want to forget that I ever loved him. Help me forget that thing out there, that monster. Two pages in and already... They, uh, and they said they wanted to treat her like the Jean Grey of the team. I gotta say, she comes off way too much like a, well, tossing her husband to a, to a bit of a bitch, I'll be honest. Tossing her husband aside, not a good starting point, I'll say. But, trust me, it gets alright. Look, I'll, I'll get this out of the way. For all my issues that are in here, they are made up for in this one. I will say that. Because here just feels... A bit edgelord like, but yeah. Basically, we have we see that Lilith is reveals bite marks on her neck as Vlad. Well, takes her blood, and then we're introduced to Sarah Harker, aka uh, and the niece of Jonathan Harker, a man we'll see later on, one of the earliest subjects of the War Project Wormwood, which kind of led them to who they are. She's known as Monster Girl. So, yeah, and they talk to Professor Harker, who's the ship's computer. And we also see, we meet up with Mike Mayhew, the monster. With, and, and, yeah, he's like, have you seen my wife? And he's keeping, oh, uh, Vlad's keeping it quiet. We're then introduced to Abraham Van Helsing, who is now President of the United States and saying, no more monsters. Now, you gotta keep in mind, Graveyard Ship has been touted as what if the Universal Monsters were the X-Men? And, okay, I kind of understand where that's going with. 
And as we didn't jump to six years ago, as we're introduced to Professor Harker, and um, as he's as they're heading on out and they're heading on through with um, Van Helsing and Vlad when he was younger, as they're being shown around the, this underwater base and everything. Although one thing that I really find a bit weird is that we're seeing what's supposed to be Lilith whispering into his ear, but then the very next page. It looks like she's approaching him. i a bit iffy on that, but basically she's already, you know, con, you know, saying, you've met my husband, the chief of security, and basically she's already snip being a bit rude and condescending, which attracts Vlad to her immediately. As, um, basically they're trying to focus on using Rita, um, worm, uh, and the project to, um, regenerate people. We also see that Mike is a capable fighter, but a few weeks, about a, yeah, weeks later, an accident happened that's completely burned Mike into pretty much what we see him as. And then Harker runs in saying, it wasn't an, a an, an accident. It's, uh, and the benefactor is, Harker gets cut off and knocked out as uh, Van Helsing starts to basically make himself his true allegiance known as he shoots Lilith and then knocks out Vlad. And then we see that what it seems to indicate that Vlad is a, um, not Vlad, Van Helsing is a vampire as he injects stuff into Vlad that makes him a vampire because his project notes for Um, and um, Oh yeah, but then we see that later on with Van Helsing at the tomb of Dracula as he finds Dracula. Then we see in the, um, Atlantis is the, under, is the name of the base. Mike is waking up and things start to go haywire. As at the same time, Vlad is also perfectly okay. He meets up with Harker as they, um, well, they don't even make it a few uh, steps before he, and Harker gets blasted right through by something off screen. Oh, well, I guess it's supposed to be a robot, but it's, yeah, yeah, it's a, a soldier, and it's a bit condensed, but it's still pretty cool of an escape. We did, they find then uh, Lilith's body, as they eventually get onto um, an escape pod, and they make it into, um, on board the main portion of Atlantis, where he meets up with the AI of Harker, who was based off of it. As then soon the ship then takes off in the air, and I guess they, the ship looks a lot like Star Trek D Space Nine. Oh, yeah. Starbase D Space Nine. You know, with the wings and it's a circle and all that. But then we see that Mick has gotten out and he's in the water as he walks on out. And, well, lets out a big roar. Um, we also see that someone else had gotten out as well. But I do not believe we focus on this person. I could be wrong. But uh, yeah, then we see um, um, yeah, the only bit of trace is mutated radiation. We see a bunch of sharks and everything. Then we see um, Van Helsing, uh, not Van Helsing, I can't say it. Vlad is describing um, all the stuff they did, how to use um, wormwood to bring her back to life, as she now has regenerative abilities similar to his. We then find out, you know, they find Monster Girl. And then we see some other elements of their backstory. You know, about Van Helsing was able to, um, while they were trying to recover and everything, Van Helsing was actually using his position to rise on up and eventually become president, killing people along the way. Mick eventually came onto the ground, you know, surface, um, had attacked, and they found him. Which, spoiler alert, but that's what happened in Monster Hunt that I talked about a while ago. The uh, Lone Star and um, uh, Jawbreakers crossover that had uh, graveyard shift in it. Actually, this little moment right here, you can barely make it out, but it's Lilith talking with Mick and he may be saying, hey Mick, it's me, Lilith. No, don't touch me. I'm not the man you married. It's going to be okay. We're going to make them pay for what they've done to you. 
Well, see what I mean? I got to say, and now I actually talked with Mark and Poulton, and he said they had this written long ago. Mike just took it and utilized it. Good on you, Mike. I actually did like that. It was a nice, you know, taking of it, because Van Helsing was also in this, and given what happened in Volume 2, the only place they could place it was as a prequel. But yeah, basically we um, get the explanation they've been trying now to bring down um, Atlantis Corporation. We see them going in for, you know, fighting through and everything, just tearing them apart. But every time they did, it just didn't seem to do much good as, well, made more, um, Elsie got more and more popular until he became president. And still pushing this whole no more monsters stuff. Then we had, they, you know, while Vlad and um, Lil's having their affair, someone, it's Van Helsing, sends off the uh, video to Mick, Mick as he now finds out. Meanwhile, then they show up to Capitol Hill to the to Congress after um, Van Helsing has killed someone. We see him walk in. We see this reporter guy just being all like, this is George Byrne on Capitol Hill where President Van Helsing has just arrived. Okay. Here comes the point that really disgusted me. Okay. First, in this moment here, we see George and this pregnant reporter. Then, big explosion. George is sent flying and the woman is blasted to pieces and her baby is shot right out of her. Oh, sorry. What the hell? That felt so beyond grotesque and unnecessary. It almost took me out. If it wasn't for the fact that it was near the very end, but Again, so much of this was still rather good, if a bit basic by her numbers, but that point was just like, what the hell, did she have to be pregnant and all that? And worst of all is that later on, we find out that George might, uh, might be all right. Uh, um, I'll get to that in a moment. But yeah, we then see um, lights, the uh, ultraviolet light is shown on Congress, revealing them to be vampires. Everyone's, you know, attacking and everything. Um, because, yeah, the good guys did this. Wasn't the bad guys. Wasn't the bad guys trying to fake frame the good guys. The good guys blew it all up so they can reveal Congress to them. And, okay, if this George guy had died and the woman did not, that would have been one thing. And this George guy seems to be an, an asshole. We don't even know who this pregnant reporter was. And yet, she's blasted and her baby shot right out of her. I just don't get it at all. But, but yeah, they um, try to stab um, Van Helsing and it doesn't work. No, oh, but wait, he's a vampire, isn't he? We'll get to that tomorrow. But yeah, um, uh, we see as everything's going on, the news reports are taking it kind of like, oh, well, we'll get back to it. Hopefully we'll be able to help George. Now, I don't know if that meant George is alive or not, so that's what I'm saying. But yeah, everyone's like now realizing, oh, there might be some truth to this. Hey, the, uh, hail to the, uh, and to, uh, Graveyard Shaft. That we see Van Helsing making his way to his master. As he's basically saying, like, I underestimated him, but I still have an ace up my sleeve. What he set up with was Mick. And we find out he's working with Lord Dracula. As we end book one. And... Yeah, there's a bunch of supplemental material in, in here revealing how John and Mark have been working on this since 2010 and everything. Um, and basically, yeah, the whole notion of it being like the X-Men meet the Universal Monsters. We also see some alternate takes of pages. Like I say, I do prefer the redo done over this one. We get some more descriptions about the coloring. We get some fan artwork, um, some other artwork, especially by Mike Mc, uh, McMahon, who's going to be a big part going forward in the next in the next two episodes. Um, more from Mike. Then we get descriptions of the designing of the logo, and well, that's pretty much it. So yeah, that was Graveyard Shift Volume One. Interesting, if a little confusing. Um, 
or an origin that there's problems there are problems blowing up that news reporter for one thing the stuff was Lilith um, being so dismissive and we've seen it right in the first pages it's like uh, okay and yet also given what we just saw about when she found Mick and then we see now I mean Again, not that much explanation. It, that's one of the problems of going with the 90s image aesthetic, you know, type of writing can go with. Where you just have this stuff just happen and you just keep chugging along, chugging along. And you, if you think about it too much, it starts to get to you a bit. But, yeah, here, like I said, there were problems. But, thankfully, a lot of those problems, like I said, are resolved in Volume 2 which we'll be going about with tomorrow. But for a start off, this is not bad at all. I'll definitely say that. This is not bad, but it's, again, it's an acquired taste, is what I would say. If you're into that type of stuff, that's fine. And like I said, if it wasn't for that one sequence, I would have said this was a absolute, like, oh my God, amazing. But that one page just put me so much off it made me then look at some of the other problems as well. And again, it just felt like wasn't necessary. No, it wasn't. Not really. But again, overall, everything else, interesting, clever. Wish the characters were a bit more likable. I get they're supposed to be monsters. And again, in volume two, they do become more likable. But for here, it just felt like a bunch of, I don't want to say assholes, but uh, I can't find the right words at the moment. But again, not bad, just had issues. But like I said, tomorrow I'll be going over volume two and the supplemental book. Whole different story there. So I'll see you guys later. Take care and catch you on and catch you tomorrow.